It can't happen to me, it won't happen to me, is the common refrain. But acquaintance rape does happen. The recent William Kennedy Smith rape trial has brought tough interpretations of consensual versus forced sex. It's brought it right into our living rooms. Although Smith was acquitted of all charges, experts are afraid that the trial will have a chilling effect on victims coming forward. The Boston Area Crisis Rape Crisis Center reports at least one in three women will be raped in her lifetime. Among these, 60 to 80 percent are rapes committed by a person known to the victim. Rapists come from all socioeconomic backgrounds, all professions and ethnic groups, and all educational backgrounds. In the same study, one out of 12 college men admitted to having committed sexual acts that would legally be considered rape. Here to discuss the issue of acquaintance rape and all of its ramifications are Emily Mason. She is a rape survivor. She is now a senior at Wellesley College. And Allison Hopkins, who's the director of the rape support groups at Wellesley College. Story, and Emily, help us understand what can happen to a rape victim by what happened to you. I think that for me, my story started when I was 13 and we were on a summer vacation and I was with a group of young people my age. We all went out to the movies together and then um, everyone kind of split off into pairs. It was a summer evening and I think that there's a feeling of security in that. I was with a good friend's older brother and so I felt safe in that and I think that that's one of the first keys to acquaintance rape is that initially you feel very safe with the person you're with, mm -hmm. that your um, barriers are down and that you don't feel this isn't a dark alley, this isn't trying to get your car at 3 o'clock in the morning, this isn't a situation where your defenses are up and you're looking for something like that to happen. That it's not that at all, that you're very calm and you feel very secure in your surrounding. Um, people kind of splintered off from the group and we walked around a bit. Um, I eventually, we walked back behind the condominiums in which we were staying in, um, in a fairly quiet area but it really didn't startle me to begin with. Um, and I was then raped on one of the lawn chairs out by the pool. And uh, did you fight your attacker? Yes. We, you did? Yes. Uh, okay, you go through this awful ordeal. We won't, we won't make you uncomfortable by asking you the details. But how long was it before you told someone? For me, and I think that this tends to be fairly common for rape survivors, I remembered the event that later that evening and then again in the morning but then it lapsed for me for four years I completely was unaware of what had happened to me until right before I left for college um, I had a nightmare and it started putting the pieces together And it took me about six months to put all of the pieces together to remember all of the details to realize what had happened to me completely. and then you told who uh, the first people I told were my parents and how, how did they treat this my parents I think for them the initial reaction was because it had happened so much far long before that they were thinking more of the ramifications that could have occurred, um, any sexually transmitted diseases mm -hmm. or a pregnancy. So almost their initial reaction was, well, thank goodness that's all that happened. But for a rape survivor, that's a sense of, what do you mean that's all that happened? It's, it's very terrifying to put a name to what happened to you. It's very hard to say, yes, this did occur. Is it almost impossible for anyone who hasn't been there to fully understand what it does to you? I think so. How are you now? I'm okay. How were you watching the William Kennedy Smith trial? It was hard because no matter what the judicial system says, she knows what happened to her. And if it's her view and from where she's standing, she was raped, that's a very much sense of someone taking power from you and taking the control away from you. And that's very frightening. So it was hard for you to watch. Allison, is Emily's reaction in terms of burying the details and not remembering a pretty typical one? Yes. It, I is. Would say it is. That's hard for a lot of people to understand how someone who is bright cannot draw up this conscious memory. Can you help us understand? Well, many rape survivors do repress it um, for a number of reasons. And one is that they just, they're not at a stage where they can deal with it. You know, they don't ha know where they can turn for support. And since they don't have the support, it's not something they want to take on themselves. Um, also, there's some confusion around, you know, was it really rape? I mean, and um, if I knew him, you know, and I had, had even had sex with him before, was this time rape? Also, there's a, a feeling of guilt. You know, what could I have done to have prevented this that I didn't do? Mm -hmm. So they don't want to deal with all of those things that can just be overwhelming and will repress it for a while. What about all of the articles this past week from rape crisis counselors saying this is chilling, this mm -hmm. verdict, this acquittal? 
uh, in terms of other rape victims coming forward. Do you agree? Yes, I do. Um, I think that the message that's being sent, you know, whether or not he is guilty, the message that's being sent to rape survivors is that they're not supported through the system um, and that it's really their background that's going to be dragged through the mud. And it is already staggering to know that 90% of all rapes go unreported. Yes. So what does that do to the one in three figure? It said, it said that one in three women will be raped. Is, is that really an, uh, an invalid figure? Is it more like every woman has the potential? I think everyone definitely has the potential. I think the one in three is a very low estimate and that once I think what I found in college is that once I've shared my experience with other people, so many more voices in the room will come up and say, well, that happened to me also. Mm -hmm. And they've never shared it with anyone. So it, it's staggering to me. Once that dam is broken, people feel very comfortable to talk about it. And I think one in three is a very low estimate. You still watch for exit doors wherever you yes. are on a date? Yes. Even if you trust? Yes. Was this an acquaintance rape? Uh, well, no, it really wasn't an acquaintance rape. He knew who I was, so it wasn't that I just was the next person who walked along in the parking lot or that kind of a scenario. He was my next door neighbor, but I didn't know him. And he broke into my house at five in the morning when I was asleep, so in that way it was not really an acquaintance rape. And you rape. never saw him, did you? No, I didn't really see him because he woke me up already lying on top of me and he blindfolded me almost immediately. I caught a glimpse of his hair and of his uh, sleeve so I could identify those features, but uh, What did he take more. from you? I think he took my, you know, it's a little bit trite sounding, but he really took my youth and my innocence. Um, subsequently, I was very untrusting. It's taken me years to learn to regain trust. Um, and I think he brought me to the point where I realized very young that you don't get to choose everything that happens to you in life, um, that bad things can happen to you. Uh, the good side of that and uh, ultimately was that I also learned that you can survive very difficult things happening as How well. How much therapy have you had to have to get to a point where you can trust? Oh, um, I've been, I was in and out of therapy for years. Uh, I haven't been now for several years. But what, How did you deal with watching the William Kennedy Smith trial and what were your thoughts? Well, I thought as I watched it that in a lot of ways it really was a very typical rape trial because the um, the system really does sort of favor the accused person, and it does not favor the person bringing the accusation forward. Uh, you know, her history was was brought into question, and his was really not. Um, I found her testimony moving. Um, I felt for her because she was obviously in pain. Did how did you feel when the uh, underwear was being waved around by the defense? I think that bothered a lot of people. Did it bother you? Uh, it didn't really bother me because I thought it was histrionics. Um, I think that it's, you know, it's wrong. What does it say me, about how far we have come or, the, or how far we haven't come in dealing with rape? I think the fact that a date, date rape type, acquaintance rape type case um, gets to court at all now means that we've come somewhere. Um, I think the way it was handled and also the way it was responded to publicly uh, tells me that we really haven't come very far at all. say, Margaret, to victims out there that might be saying, I, I, I'm dying inside, this happened to me and it's horrible, but I'm afraid I won't be believed. I think it's worth speaking up and even if they're not in a situation where they can either find or name their accuser, I mean their attacker, or even further go to court, it's very important to speak out. I think the healing process really doesn't begin until you start to be able to communicate with other people about what has happened to you.